Hello, 5 Minute Friday number 25. And it's been a little bit of a break since my uh, last 5 Minute Friday. I've been doing a lot of theory topics and I'm easing myself back into the, uh, the world of practical by looking at some computer aid design today. Um, this is focused on SOLIDWORKS and in particular the CSWA, which is a qualification or a certification by the SALT Systems called the um, Certified SOLIDWORKS Associate Program. It's one of the three levels of, of testing they do. They do an associate, a professional and an expert and a, a, a range of um, additional specialist qualifications such as wellments and sheet metal and finite elements and sustainability, things like that. So I took this exam today and I scored the full 240 out of 240 and I did that in about two thirds of the time allowed and I just wanted to share with you how I did that. So before we do, uh, let's just have a quick look at what the CSWA is all about. Um, it's a program which basically demonstrates a level of competence, not advanced competence, but a level of competence with the software. There's a number of questions, there's some multiple choice questions, such as um, the names of various views. So we've got a crop section here. Um, and there's also some modeling exercises. And what it does is it tests your ability to create design intent because anyone. Um, can create a 3D model really, really quickly. What is more difficult is to create a model which will update as you change dimensions. So the SOLIDWORKS CSWA teaches you really to create proper parametric relationships like tangents and parallels, um, dimension in a sensible way that doesn't just work once, but works when you update. And it basically drills you into using equation-driven design. And you'll find that you've got these values here, A, and B. Um, and what they'll do is one version of the part they'll give you A, B, and C. There's possibly an angle, oh, there's a width C there. You set up a, an equation table, and then in the second part of the, the question, they'll change those values. Now, if you set it up right, it's just a case of changing equations. If you don't use equations, you've got to redraft the whole thing, and it takes a long time. It's nearly impossible. So, you've got a couple of um, drafting questions. Uh, there's a basic, intermediate, and advanced part. So the advanced part will generally have things like shells or undercuts or hidden detail in a section. And there will be an assembly uh, in addition to the modeling. And basically, as I did this test today, I made a couple of notes on how best to, uh, to approach it. So I can't actually show you exactly what was in the test because um, in the terms and conditions of the test, it asks you not to show the, the ins and outs of each question, presumably to keep it, um, you know, to, to reward skill rather than just rote learning of the actual test methods. Um, but there's a, a few, to me, counterintuitive things that I wanted to share with you. So let's take an example of this given part here. What I would tend to do if I was going to create this in assembly pre CSWA. I would uh, just draw a random part and start building up. Now, the way they test the assembly is to work out the center of mass. And you've got to be really careful with the um, with the coordinate system. Now, what I have learned through this is, let's say if we were to bring a pin in, we'll just open it as a file. Then the trick is, rather than doing the um, some kind of funky custom coordinate system, which you could do by the sketch. And then we could insert a coordinate system on a given point. And we could orient that to the uh, to the way the diagram. What I found um, through some uh, useful resources online is that if you just use the make assembly from part, then for the purposes of the CSWA, it pretty much orients it orients the um, the origin exactly how you'd need it. So that's one useful tip. The other thing is when we're creating one of the modeled parts, um, then set up the equations first. It's going to be tempting when you create a part like this, especially if you're used to more informal drafting, as I was, um, sort of draft. And then just put these in afterwards. Now, in my mind, it makes a lot 
more sense. I'll just simply search for equation in the command. And from there, we can set up global variables. So I can put A. In this case, A is 81. I'll put a nonsense value in next. B is 57. And then when I come to dimension something, I just hit the equals button, type A, and it picks it out. Excuse <coughs> me. So that's a really simple way. And set that up first. You get this little equations folder. You can go in, manage your equations, and change it to say 40. And it updates the drawing. And it's a lot, lot simpler. And that's pretty much it. The final tip, if it is a tip, is Use the Infinite Skills video series. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, it's by a, a super experienced guy called Dean Kerst. And um, I spent a couple of evenings with this DVD and I was ready to go. And um, like I said, we ended up with 100% um, in two thirds of the time of asking. So uh, absolutely worth the investment. I was lucky enough to borrow it from the library. But superb piece of training software, and I recommend the um, the Infinite Skills series. I'll be checking that out for some of the more advanced qualifications. See you next time.